His praise shall continually be in my mouth. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Good morning, Wichester. Good morning. We bless the Lord for this day, the 31st of January. We just started January. Now it's uh, to the end. Uh, that's a sign of good health and God's blessing. So we've got to praise the Lord. The Lord is good. Let us arise while we do the call of God. As you come to worship today, bring with you all joys and sorrows. Jesus will offer hope. As you come to worship today, believe in the power of God through Jesus Christ. Jesus will bring us healing. As you come to worship today, feel the presence of God. Jesus will teach us new ways to live. Amen. Let us have our seats while we prepare our hearts for prayer. Heavenly Father, the light of the world, we thank you for shining your light through the Lord Jesus Christ to us. We ask that you will help us that this light will shine into us and through us to show your deeds, your deeds of mercy, your deeds of justice to the whole world around us. We permit those who are coming to you that are on the way. We ask that you quicken their steps and let them be here in time to be partakers of the wonderful blessings you have for us today. And for those who are at home watching online, we ask that you bless them equally. And for those who have forgotten, we pray, Holy Spirit, that you remind them so that they will, be, they will tune in and be part of the blessings of this day. We thank you for the season of Epiphany. We thank you for the showing of your son and uh, the characteristics of you that you display. What a wonderful God you are. What a merciful God you are. You loved us so much to give us the Lord Jesus Christ to shine his light, who, who he is, into the dark world of ours, to bring joy, to bring peace, and to bring love. Father, we thank you. We want to give your son who will stand up to give us your word. We give him in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Cover him completely, and let everything he will say come from you, Holy Spirit, that we will receive our healing, that we will receive our blessing, that we will receive inspiration with which we will go into the world and bless the people around us. Thank you because you hear us always, and even now you have heard, since we are going to serve you in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord's prayer. I need you. You need me. We are all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me. We are all a part of God's body. It is his will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. 
Good morning, children. Good morning, young adults, teenagers. Good morning, adults. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we are going to rejoice. We are going to be glad in it, regardless of our preparation for the snow later. We are going to rejoice, because God made the snow too. Okay, this morning we are going to talk about this word at the top here, true. Very, very important word, true. When we were growing up, um, I, I do not know if you children learned this in school, but uh, adults, we, we, you remember when you were going in school, school we learned, speak the truth and speak it ever, cast it what it will. For he who has the wrong he did does the wrong still, thing still. Speak the truth forever. The opposite of truth is lie. Um, some people call it alternative truth. Uh, but we know that it is a lie or untruth because the word lie seems to be uh, uh, um, very too negative to say. Speak it ever, cost it what it will. No matter what it cost you, children speak the truth because it may cost you uh, uh, a, 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 a night that you would have gone to stay with your friends. It, it would cost you some of your uh, um, allowance that you would have gotten. It will cost you also a time out it will also maybe cost you to stay in a corner. Whatever, whatever it costs you, speak the truth. For he who hides the wrong, he did. If you hide the wrong thing, you're going to forever hide it. And you're going to tell another untruth to cover up that lie. And tell another one to cover up that one. And so it's like a, 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 a ball, a gummy ball that it rolls along and it picks up everything and it goes along. It picks up more and more and so you get in deeper trouble. So speak the truth or else you will forever do the wrong because you do tell another lie to cover up the one you told before. So be strong and be brave to tell the truth, no matter what's going to happen. Get it over and done with. And I have here, O, oh, ownership. Own it up. You did it. A, accountability. And R, responsibility. Take responsibility for what you did. You know what is happening in the United States this day. People do not take the responsibility, and so it goes on and on and on, and you tell the lie today, and another person pick it up, and another person pick it up, and another person pick it up, because nearly half of the United States pick up the same lie. And it caused death. It caused riot only because one lie was told, big lie. And you can't cover it up because you tell it already. So all you have to do is to say it again and again and you yourself believe it. So children, tell the truth, speak the truth, speak it ever, cost it what it will. He who does the wrong, hides the wrong he did, does the wrong still, thing still. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. So God, this morning we thank you for the children. They are not out this morning, but we thank you for those who are here. 
We pray, O oh God, that you will bless them where they are and they are listening in. So place them in your charge as they go out this week to school or if they stay at home to do remote learning. Be in their hearts, O oh God, and let them remember the lesson for today. Speak the truth. Amen. Now we will have Brother Gums delivering his message on Steve
this is the time of your worship service when we get an opportunity to give back to God some of what He has given to us. And we all know that God has blessed us in a tremendous way. And so if you have not dropped your tithe and offering in the bucket on your way in, you have another opportunity to do so on your way out. So at this time, we will hear from our music minister. <laughs> lesson this morning is taken from the Old Testament, Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 15 through 20. And that is Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 15 to 20. The Lord your God will rise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people, you shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, If hear the voice of the Lord my God any more or ever again, see this great fire, I will die. 
Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the word that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other God, or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. Here ends the reading of God's word. May God have his richest blessings to his holy scriptures. Stand for the reading of the gospel. And this is found in St. Mark chapter 1, reading verses 21 through 28. And they went to Capernaum. And when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent, and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. Here is the reading of the Gospel of Science of the day. Please be seated. And now, Sister Gibson will bless us with a song. Good morning. Uh, today, I will sing Lamb of God.
Thank you, Sister Gibson, for your ministry through music. I am so weak, I should have died, but you brought me to your side. The Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, who wash me in his precious blood. Yeah. My Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. May each one of us find ourselves truly washed in the blood of the Lamb of God. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. Good morning. This morning, the title of the message is Just the Routine. Just the Routine. And the text is from the Gospel according to St. Mark chapter 1, verses 21 to 28. You know, I was tempted to preach from the Deuteronomy passage, especially because of the contrast between what was prophesied and what is reality. What I mean is that there are many who spoke and declared that they spoke from God. And they spoke what the elections would turn out to be. Just in case there are prophets who would want to speak on behalf of God and know that they are not speaking on behalf of God or might not know. If you don't know, you shouldn't speak. But just a reminder, Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse 20. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. Not may die, not might die, but shall die. This is a rather frightening place to find yourself. But our text is from Mark chapter 1 verses 21 to 28. And I read a few of these verses in your hearing. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority. Just the routine. Let us pray to God. Lord God, speak to us in the quietness of this time while we wait on you. Speak, Lord, by touch of tongue and by touch of life. And so let your word be spoken. Let your word, O oh God, be heard, and then let your word be lived. 
And so let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Routines are important to life. They are especially important so that we may be able to maintain consistency and constancy. We do things so that we don't miss a beat. We try to do everything we need to do so that we can be comforted and comfortable in our own sense of well-being. Some persons, before they leave the house, they have to check sometimes two or three times to be certain that the lights are off or the water is turned off or as Reverend Fairweather discovered, <laughs> because she didn't keep routine, <laughs> is that the stove was not. <laughs> so there are persons who follow routines to be certain that all the bases are covered. Paul had routines too. The Apostle Paul, whenever he went into a city, would first go to the synagogue to teach. And then after that, he would go among the Gentiles and teach. Jesus also had routines. His custom was when the Sabbath came to go to the synagogue or go to the temple. And his custom, his routine was to go there to teach. God, though, has a way of getting into the midst of our routines. And sometimes it seems as if God commandeers our routines for his purpose. You know, since COVID, I've been using parts of the title of the message to remind us to keep in memory the message preached. And when I looked at routine this, this week, I said to myself, that's what, seven letters? That's quite a task. But here is what I really want us to bear in mind, and it's still routine. But I want you to write down these seven words. And I will visit with them briefly as we go along. They spell out routine. Recognize. Opportunity. Usual, timing, intervene, nothing is normal. No last three words, huh? No? <laughs> but nothing is normal. Encounters. So from the bottom up, encounters, nothing is normal. Intervene, timing, usual opportunities, recognize. The word has to follow the text that is before us. Remembering that God has a tendency to invade our routines and to claim our routines as his own. And then through those routines, God manifests 
God's purpose. So when we look at the text, when we look at this story with Jesus and the disciples going to Capernaum, and on the Sabbath day going into the synagogue where he taught, as was his custom, we notice first of all that Jesus was recognized. They recognized Jesus because they now knew who he was and what he was about. In a sense, we like Jesus in the midst of our life's routines need to remain consistent with who we are and what we are about. You know, sometimes people who work with us might have difficulty recognizing whether or not we are being Christian because we are so inconsistent. Now Jesus, according to our text, it tells us that there was a man with an unclean spirit. And the unclean spirit recognized Jesus. What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? You see, the unclean spirits knew that whenever Jesus shows up, they will have a most uncomfortable time. What would happen if when we show up, the unclean spirits, those that are about destruction, recognize us for who we are, bearers of Christ into whatever space we find ourselves. So when we go about our routines, we need to understand that people will recognize us for who we are. But in every routine, God also provides opportunities. You see, God provides opportunities to be the God presence. Not just to be the bearer of Jesus, but to become the manifestation of Jesus' presence. So Jesus shows up in the synagogue. He showed up to teach. And even as he prepared to teach, even as he was going about his routine, not just because he was Jesus, but in that case because he was a teacher, understand students showed up. Suppose we were to pay attention to the fact that no matter what is going on in the midst of our life's routines, whether it be at work or at home or in the community, that we seek to recognize that God always gives us opportunities to be his presence. So then we will speak a word into the lives of others, trusting that God is able to use our words to turn around the lives of persons. It could be just the way we look at them. It could be the smile that is on our faces. It could be our attitude, or as they would say, it's the gate, our gate. The way we show up. God always provides opportunities, and on that particular Sabbath day, God provided Jesus with the opportunity to encounter this man who was in the midst of the class. So God recognized Jesus for who he was. God provided opportunities. And we need also to bear in mind that that which is usual can be upset too. So imagine Jesus is going about teaching as he is accustomed to. But it's not going to be a usual class. In the midst of his teaching, in the midst of what was usual, there came this man shouting, not so much 
from himself as the unclean spirits that were in him. They cried out, What do you have with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Just, just pause there long enough. That even when our lives are going through the usual routines, God is still able to be in, with us and in our midst when our usual routines get interrupted and get upset. What would happen if we were teaching a class and somebody shouts out, What do you have to do with us? Miss Savage, what do you have to do with us, Reverend Fairweather? What, are you here to destroy us? The normal, the ordinary, the usual is going to get upset when God comes into the midst of our routines. And you know, those unclean spirits, they knew that the time had come for their own destruction. So they voiced it. They voiced it. What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are. The Holy One of God. You see, we can become in the midst of our routines, God's timing. We can become the presence of God that says to others that your circumstance is going to change. That things don't have to continue in the way they have for years. You might have been down in the dumps and now God is going to lift you up. You might have been downtrodden. You might have been oppressed. You might have been deprived of the resources, the basic resources of life. And so God is saying that the time has come for our change. And you represent that change in the midst of your routine. So God's timing is always whenever God shows up and whenever God shows up, God is gonna do something about us. But God, looking at our routines, we can say that we will be recognized, we'll have opportunities, the usual is gonna get upset. And God is going to set up our timing and God's timing. But it's always, always the time when God intervenes. You see, God never leaves us the way he finds us. So Jesus, he came into the synagogue. The man was seated there. But he was not going to leave that synagogue the way he came. And the unclean spirits knew that because they knew who Jesus was. You see, God intervenes in our lives so that change, God change, can happen. God invades our routines. God lives in the midst of our life's routines so that God can change our circumstances. He intervenes so that we are never left the way we were found. And yes, nothing is normal. You look at our text and you see that. Because when you look at this man, he might have looked like a normal human being. The difference was that he had unclean spirits within him. How many of us might be on the train or on the bus or just driving along the path 
and encounters people who are not just normal, but something is different within them. They look normal on the outside, but God has for us a change in routine. Nothing is normal or nothing will remain normal with God. Everything, everything has a role, even the man showing up when he did show up. The man didn't know what was going to happen to him. The man might have come to the synagogue out of routine. He might have experienced upheavals in his life. And the people who were there were recognizing that this Jesus, he's teaching with authority. He's not teaching like the scribes do. When he speaks, not just everybody listens, but it's as if life stops in recognition of his teaching. So you and I, my brothers and sisters, need to be alert every time. Wherever we go, because God is still able to change what is normal into abnormal. God is able to change the ordinary into the extraordinary. God is always able to use you and I to bring about God's purpose. And not only are we about being recognized and living out the opportunities as also the usual that is going to get upset and we become God's sign of God's timing and God will intervene in anything that seems normal. But we know that God is always seeking to have fresh encounters with us. So our routines might be old, but God's encounters are fresh. Notice what the man or the spirits within the man said. Are you going to destroy us? We know who you are. When you have an encounter with Jesus, God is going to change you. So when people encounter you, you and I need to be ready to be the conduit through which God's fresh encounter will take place and people's lives will change. One of the things, though, we have to remember is that the encounter is not with us. It's never with us. It's never about us. The encounter is always with God. So you and I need to be conscious of that fact. That it is the God in us who will be encountered by the people who meet us. So God is looking for people who are also open for a fresh encounter. So when you allow God into your routines, deliverance will come. But when deliverance comes, the enemy of life will be destroyed. Pause for a while and think of the implications of that. Because what is normal, like a vote, when God intervenes, the vote becomes the power of change. So when you encounter persons who are speaking untruth, you who are God's truth will confront and convict because you in that place must now become the truth that is spoken to those in power and when persons challenge you and say that you should be about unity 
You and I will need to ask the question, unite with what? It's either you're going to surrender who you are to unite with the unclean spirit, or you're going to be who God wants you to be and trust God to carry God's plan forward. And yes, the Democratic Party needs to hear that. Yes, the Democratic Congress needs to hear that. Yes, the Democratic President needs to hear that. Unity can only happen when people are willing and ready to acknowledge their own shortcomings, their own culpability, or else it's just going to be contamination. It's going to be the shroud for corruption. So may God who calls us in the midst of our life's routine speak truth to us in a way we can understand and truth heavy enough for us to carry but never by ourselves but with God's help. So yes, it's just the routine. But it's never just the routine when God is in it. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite us to turn to God in prayer. You know, the, this, this last year, quite a lot of illnesses and deaths have happened in our midst. And I just want to lift up some of these before us. Remember those who are grieving the loss of loved ones, but remember those who are not as well to move around and to be about the normal routines of life. Remember Tony Douglas, Deaconess's mom. We remember Paul, who a couple of weeks ago fell ill while he was here and is still battling with illness. Remember Dwayne. Remember Sister Wright. Remember the Bunting. Remember Sister Phyllis. Remember also Sister Denise Wright Hamilton. And we ask God to be so present to us that no matter what is going on, that God is able to change our circumstances. We also remember Sister Karen, whose grandmother was taken to the hospital today, moments ago. She's 99 years old, but we know that years is never an issue with God. And so we pray that God will be present with us and to us in the midst of our lives, ups and downs. Let us pray to God. Lord God, you have been present to us in the midst of the darkness of our lives. But we are thankful that you are the light and wherever your light shines, darkness cannot exist. So shine your light, O oh God, into our lives so that we can be transparent, we can be honest, we can be faithful, we can live out the mandate of faithfulness to you Lord, we pray that you will be with those who are sick and suffering. Be with Karen's grandmother. Be with Tommy Douglas, Paul, Dwayne, Sister Wright, Sister Denise, the Buntins, Sister Phyllis. All of these, oh God, we ask that you wrap your arms around and hold them together so that they never fall apart. Lord, where they feel their weakest, we ask, O oh God, that you become their strongest. 
where they feel as if they are at the end of their life's rope, we ask, for oh God, that you extend that life's rope because you are the one who has the last word. No matter what it is, oh God, the last word is yours. And when we trust you, it always works out in our favor. So be with us, O oh God, and teach us how to allow you into the midst of our routines so that you can have your way with us. And so the things we fail to bring before you in this prayer, O oh God, we ask that you add according to your will as you see fit. For we ask you these things in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. I mentioned that there were persons whom we lost during the last year. You know, this was around the time that we started to hear about COVID. And within about two months or a month and a half, the entire country was shut down and we were, our lives were turned upside down. And so I just want to lift up some names of persons who have passed on from this congregation. You know, Brother Seely, I'm not saying that these have passed on because of COVID, but they have passed on within the midst of COVID. So we have Brother Seely, we have Sister Alice Smith, we have Sister Phyllis Smalls, we have Brother Lawrence Henry, we have Brother Cecil Edwards. and Sister Greta Blyden. But there were others among us who had loved ones who passed. You remember that Sister Gibson lost her sister. The Sister Gladys Pryor lost her brother. Reverend Fiewetta lost her sister. Sister Rita Richards lost her sister. Minister Dawson lost her sister. And the savage, I was about to say the savages. <laughs> Brother Savage and Sister Savage also lost loved ones in the midst of their family. Brother Savage, it was your sister. Yeah. And Sister Savage, it was oh, your uncle. My and I know that there are others who have lost friends who are like sisters or brothers. So even as we draw down toward a year, let us thank God for what God still sustains in us. But remember, that there is a lot of grieving that needs to still take place. Just want to thank those who had much to do with this worship service. Want to thank Reverend Fairweather for her part in the worship service. Want to thank Brother Taj for live streaming and the bulletins and then later to post this service on the different platforms. Want to thank Minister Savage for his ministry of music, Brother Gums and Sister Gibson for their ministry of music. Want to thank Minister Benjamin and Minister Olabisi for their leading as well in this worship service. Want to thank the ushers and the trustees for their work and seeing to it that we are here and we remain safe. Want to thank Brother Cleveland for sanitizing this space so that we can sit comfortably and sit here. Want to thank Sister Catherine Dick who saw to it that the altar is always prepared for worship. Am I forgetting anybody else? Yes. And those who are acolytes, Brother Sanders, you are pressed in this morning, huh? 
I also want to just bring to your attention a few things. Remember, it's in the bulletin, but on Tuesday evening at 7 via Zoom, we will be having our first planning session. Our first planning session, so hopefully by 9 we should be done. And especially since we are going to be in our homes. We can't rush it, right, Brother Sanders? But the hope is that we'll be done within two hours. Also, um, the United Methodist Women, um, they will be having their meeting on Saturday, February the 6th, starting at 2 p.m. Saturday at 2 p.m. they will gather and they will gather on Zoom. The information is in the bulletin, both posted on Facebook and also on the website. You know, I try hard to resist this one, Mother Sandra. I really try it hard. But I'm going to call her out because she used to harass me every week. When are you guys going to be open? When are you going to open? Almost a year now, Sister Taya. <laughs> For the whole year, she has been harassing me about when we're going to open for the Saunders. And we are thankful that she delivered and came this morning. Notwithstanding that we have been open since September. <laughs> but we are happy to see you. And we know that incidentally she has been and the family has been through illness around COVID as well. And so we are thankful that God has truly um, restored the family so that they can fully move around again. Uh, so thankful for that. I say that. Sister Cora, huh? I didn't thank Roland. Oh my Lord, because they keep rolling, Roland. <laughs> because they keep rolling. You see, I should have, I should have put that right next to Brother Gums. Yeah. Have your name on the list. But when I saw you, I because initially I didn't see you, and I put your name toward the end and totally forgot. But hear me, that doesn't diminish the value of your ministry. Amen. You know that, I know that, God knows that. Yes. So we are thankful that you made that trek across the Washington Bridge to be with us. So thank you, Brother Roland, for your ministry of music. You know, rhythm is always good, no? Yeah. Especially for people of African ancestry. <laughs> Alrighty. That said, um, I noticed that Sister Christiana James, this last week, she's in Liberia, but this last week, she received recognition for her community service in Liberia. Now, we know she's just gone, not there. But you know, Sister Christiana can't keep still. And so she kept going and doing things, and so they recognize her. The community recognized her for what she has been doing. And you know that she spearheads the sponsorship of children back in Liberia as well, so that they can go to school and have an education. So this might be one of those ways that you might choose to become involved in mission by sponsoring a child. That said, I'm going to invite us to stand as we close out this worship service. Yes, I, and you know, I don't usually look at Facebook. I don't usually look at my cell phone, but just looking at the time, I realized, I knew that I had cousins that I, who passed on and I have forgotten sisters Ursula and Hartley 
their brother Clarence passed on as well during the course of the year. The thing with COVID is that, and with our congregation in particular, is that when persons die, they die in other places. And because of COVID, we can't travel to be in attendance at those funeral you know, services. And that makes it a little harder. So thank you for bringing that to my attention. Um, if I forget, I hope I can make up next week. Oh, one last thing. Tomorrow is Black History Month, right? Yeah. And you know what we do here in Black History Month, right? Huh? You don't know what we do here in Black History Month? We dress in African outfits, if we haven't been doing that. And we remember things from our history, and we present people who are, so we're going to continue to do that. So from next Sunday, if you have African outfits and you want to wear them to church, that's an opportune time to do so. So I invite you to lift your heads to receive this benediction. Go forth, my brothers and sisters, into your world, trusting that God will invade your normal routines and claim them as his own. So may God the Father who loves and takes care of you, God the Son who redeems you by his life, death, and resurrection, God the Holy Spirit who continues to give life to you and to me, may God meet us today and every moment of our lives. And God's people say, Amen. Amen. Amen.